In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. There is an ice storm heading our way, so we'll try to be brief. The medieval work of Father Varagine gives the Lenten fast, gives three reasons for the 40 days of the Lenten fast. I remind you again, the Lenten fast is from ages 21 to 60, traditionally. And the fast is, is one full meal and then two smaller meals that don't equal one full meal together. If you have bad health or you're over 60, then, then, then consider some other penance, the Stations of the Cross, praying an extra rosary, or just praying the five decades with more attention. Try to do spiritual reading during Lent, especially on the Passion. St. Alphonsus Liguri has a treasure of a book called the, the Passion and Death of Our Lord Jesus Christ. And that, is, that would be very good to read during Lent and to draw our mind and our heart towards the sufferings of our Lord. After all, he went through them for us. And what caused them was our own sins. All our hands are guilty of murder, in a way, by murdering our Lord by our sins. So that's why this great time of Lent is a reset for us. It's a true reset. This is the great reset. Lent, to bring us back to where we belong, to put our place before God, adoring Him, knowing we are but dust and ashes before Him, and that we have offended God, and we must make reparation. So do this Lent, I urge you, with the Immaculate Heart of Mary. She will help you. She will help you weed out all the weeds of our sins. And we want to focus on in our confessions, what sin do I confess the most? And it's those weeds we have to pull out and work on during Lent so that they're pulled out and stay pulled out. Here's what Father Viragine says. This is the book that converted St. Ignatius of Loyola. First, the Gospel of St. Matthew counts the 40 generations preceding Christ. So the 40-day fast. Secondly, Christ remained for 40 days with his disciples after his resurrection, and he also fasted 40 days. Thirdly, the world is divided into four regions, the year into four seasons, the universe into four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. Human nature is divided into four temperaments, sanguine, phlegmatic, melancholic, and choleric. The new law is divided into four Gospels, St. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And since we have disobeyed this law of God, and likewise the old law, which comprised the Ten Commandments, it is fitting that we should fast for four times ten, that is, forty days. Of course, it's so calculated that Sundays are never fast days. They never were, they never will be, and Sunday is a feast day. And then in some dioceses before Vatican II, they would dispense from the fast on some dioceses, St. Patrick's Day, and for sure that's Boston. And then, and then the Annunciation in St. Joseph. If they fall on Friday, we still abstain from meat unless it's a holy day of obligation. We are drawn to contemplate our Lord and his sufferings. In Lent, we want to draw close to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We want to we wanna pull out the thorns out of the heart of Jesus and Mary that I, I have put there, that you and I have put there by our sins. When our Lord went through his passion and all his earthly life, he, he knew all the sins of the human race, and he knew them individually. He knew all of our own sins individually, and he took the whole weight of it on the cross. And in every part of the agony of the passion, from the agony of the garden, the scourging, the crowning with thorns, the way of the cross, the dying and suffocating for three eternal hours, on the cross. 
And our Lord did this for the love of us. He tells us in this gospel, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And our hearts have grown gross. Our hearts have been diverted. Our hearts have taken detours and off a cliff. Our hearts have loved temporal and vain and impure things. Our hearts have turned from the love of God. Where your treasure is, there is your heart. And how many of us have made treasures of this world, of passing vanities, of passing pleasures, of passing honors, passing vanities of this world. Vanity of vanities, says Solomon. Vanity of vanities, and all, all is vanity. I have known all science and known the whole world and all the intricate details of how things work with physics and engineering and biology and marine biology, said Solomon in so many words. But I see that all is vanity but to save our soul. That is the, whole, the whole th one thing that really matters, and this is the beauty of Lent. Christ says, unless you do penance, you shall all likewise perish. And the Catholic Church, in her motherly wisdom, imposes on us, her children, these beautiful 40 days of extra penance. So whatever form of penance we take, the main thing is to fast from sin. But we, we, we embrace the fasting of, from food and then almsgiving to give to those in need, to pay debts. And in the old days, in the medieval ages, the many, many prisoners who had been on good behavior would be set free. Not like, not like the Biden administration, just setting out any crooks and criminals. Not that way. But criminals who had been on good behavior and were repentant, had gone to confession and showed a real amendment of life, they were set free during, during Lent to have another chance. And then, of course, prayer. Prayer. Let's give a little more time to prayer during this time of Lent. And try to, I encourage you to make the Stations of the Cross every Friday. And to pray the Rosary well. And on Sundays during Lent, the Sunday mysteries are the Sorrowful Mysteries during, during Lent. Usually starting from Septuagesima. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. Our real treasure is the heart of Jesus. He is the pearl of great price. And for that treasure, we must give everything. So we want to ask him to polish the rust off our hearts. Polish them. And he usually has to do it by fire. Gold has to be purified seven times in fire to be shining bright and beautiful with no tarnish. So God puts his friends through seven times trials. That is the crosses and tragedies, accidents, health problems, family problems, job problems, uh, moral problems, our own sins we must fight against, and also, also the tribulations that come that God permits. We know that Russia has announced that they're being uh, provoked to war, and Our Lady of Fatima already told us what's going to happen. She already gave us the game plan. Men refuse Our Lady. They won't listen to her. Russia will be the instrument to punish the world. And the president there just announced uh, a nuclear threat. Why? Because he's being provoked to war by the one world enemies of Jesus Christ. So, be prepared. Perhaps, perhaps, it's not impossible that this could be, for all of us, our last Lent. That's not impossible. So let's do it like it really was, and really repent, and really make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, who has been so offended and ignored, because she appeared in Fatima, and the bishops ignored her, most priests ignored her, most faithful ignored her. And the popes, the popes have ignored her. Pius XII had special graces to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart as Our Lady asked. He had special miracles happen to, to wake him up 
and be, truly be the Pope of Fatima that he, he claimed to be. But he didn't do it the way Our Lady asked, and perhaps, perhaps that's why during the second half of his reign, so much liberalism and destruction already entered underneath his pontificate, such as Bunini changing the sacred liturgy in 1955, <clears throat> which was preparing for the new mass. So all this took, on, took place under his nose. And maybe he, he just, maybe God allowed it that blindness because he wouldn't listen to Our Lady. And then Pope John XXIII, he would not reveal the third secret of Fatima, which was supposed to be revealed by 1960. That secret would have prevented Vatican II and the destruction of the new mass and the total collapse that we're watching today, politically and in the church. So the last popes, they have only mocked God with their ecumenism, religious liberty, and, and trying to destroy the Tridentine Latin Mass. And now Pope Francis on the throne, he's really uh, wielding the sledgehammer to destroy Catholic tradition. Our Lady said, Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. I don't think Pope Francis is the Antichrist. He's, he's not. The Antichrist will have a lot more talent and more spazzazz than Pope Francis, who won't be scowling all the time. He'll have a big smile. The Antichrist will be young, will be dashing, attractive, persuasive. He'll be possessed by Satan. And he will be totally given to wickedness, but with a lot of veneer, suit and tie, but Our Lady did say Rome will become the seat of the Antichrist. It's, I, I don't think it's impossible. I think it's quite obvious. What we see in the Sea of Peter is one of the prophets of the Antichrist. Because they, have, they are preparing the way by the new mass, by the heresies of Vatican II, preparing Catholics for the Antichrist to lose their faith and look at our political structure. The whole world is ready for a huge devastation worldwide. And after that devastation, if God doesn't allow, the, tri he, the triumph of Our Lady will take place before the time of the Antichrist. But the Antichrist, the, the man of the Antichrist, will come in after a world disaster, such as the Third World War. But Our Lady will have her triumph before that. That is the sixth stage of the church. So let's uh, make reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Let's do what she asked us to do. The five first Saturdays of reparation. Try to do that this year. And try to keep the daily rosary, which she asked, and wear her brown scapular. And have that spirit of the children of Fatima of reparation to the Immaculate Heart. And whenever you make a sacrifice during this Lent, whether it be fasting, almsgiving, prayer, Praying for the souls in purgatory, which don't forget them. That's a great work of mercy. Whatever good work you do, say, as Our Lady taught the children of Fatima, O oh, my Jesus, it is for the love of Thee, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the sins against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Say those prayers, and let's begin our Lent today, uniting it with the Immaculate Heart of Mary, that she make it fruitful and give us a true spirit of compunction, of contrition for our sins. At the Mass, the priest strikes his chest three times, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea massima culpa. And then you do it before Holy Communion and at the beginning of Mass. I have sinned through my grievous fault, through my grievous fault, through my grievous fault, I have exceedingly offended God and sinned. And that action of, of striking the chest is a sort of crushing because the Latin word for contrition is to crush, contere. We crush our hearts for having offended our God. And we must do it now by repentance and penance and contrition. Do it now. Now is the time. And the, the prayer says in the blessing of the ashes, the prayer says, uh, give us the spirit of the Ninevites who did penance, that whole city that was 50 miles in circumference, 50 miles around. The whole city, including the king, 
took off his robes of glory, put on sackcloth and ashes. Even the animals did not eat for a certain time, and they did penance. And, and God spared the city. So may perhaps God will spare our nation if enough people are making reparation to the Immaculate Heart and doing penance. So let's unite with the Immaculate Heart of Mary during this time of Lent to really make it in union with her Immaculate Heart. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us and for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.